Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to use a secure external password store to hold database credentials in a client wallet. We often write scripts that connect to the database. It's a really bad idea to include database credentials in these scripts. In the past, people have used OS authentication to solve this, but that doesn't work with the multi-tenant architecture. Secure external password stores were introduced in Oracle 10G Release 2. These protect credentials and work fine with the multi-tenant architecture and a range of client tools. Let's create some database users to demonstrate this functionality. We create a user called TestUser1 and grant it the Create Session privilege. We create a user called TestUser2 and grant it the Create Session privilege. We also allow test user 1 to make proxy connections to test user 2. On the client machine, we make a directory to hold the wallet and a directory to hold the Oracle networking files. You can pick any path you want, provided you remain consistent with your configuration settings. The executables for configuring the wallet are in the bin directory of your client installation. We create a new wallet using the ORAPKI command. We tell it we want to create a wallet. We give it the wallet location. We don't need to tell it the file names as the file names are always the same. We provide a password to protect the wallet. Here we've used the auto login local flag, which means the wallet contents can be used by a client tool without a password. The local bit means this will only work on the current machine. We couldn't copy the wallet to another machine. If we needed to be able to do that, we could use the auto login flag instead. With the wallet created, we can start adding credentials with the makestore command. Each credential is mapped to a connect string, an entry in the tnsnames.ora file. We give the wallet location, use the create credential flag, then list the connect string, username and password for the test user 1 credential. The connect string can be any text unique for the credential, but it must be defined in the tnsnames.ora file. The command prompts for the wallet password on the command line, but I've got round this by using the here document syntax to provide this. We repeat the previous action, but this time use a new connect string, username and password for the test user 2 credential. We repeat the action again, but this time for the proxy connection. Notice we're connecting to test user 2 using the username and password for test user 1. We can see some files have been created in the wallet location. We can use the makestore command to list the credentials. It displays the connect string and the associated username. The sqlnet.ora file tells the client machine how to find the wallet. Notice the wallet location entry includes the directory where the wallet can be found. Now we need to create an entry in the tnsnames.ora file for each connect string referenced in the wallet credentials. We have the basic connect string for the pdb1 database. We have a copy of that entry, with the only change being the connect string name, which is pdb1 test user1. We do the same for pdb1 test user2 and pdb1 proxy. We use the TNS admin environment variable to tell the client tools where to find the Oracle networking files. I'm going to test the setup using SQLCL, but this works fine for tools like SQL Plus and Data Pump. We start SQLCL with slash at pdb1 test user1. The pdb1 test user1 connect string in the tnsnames.ora file explains how to connect to the database. The sqlnet.ora wallet location explains where to find the wallet. The wallet is checked to see if there's a credential matching the connect string. If there is, it's used. We connect to the database. The show user command tells us we're connected to test user1. We then exit. We repeat the test using the pdb1 test user2 connect string. This time we've connected to test user2. This time we use the pdb1 proxy connect string. We've made a proxy connection to test user2 
using the test user one credentials. Using a secure external password store is my preferred method to allow scripts to connect to the database. If you use the database services on Oracle Cloud, you'll see this method is used there also. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.